Hi, I'm Susan Lewis from WRTI. I'm here with guitarist Jason Vio. He plays a new guitar suite on a new album, Pat Metheny's Road to the Sun. Hi, Jason. Hey, Susan. Good to see you again. Great to see you. Wow. Well, this is an exciting album, and it seems like a very natural collaboration between you and Pat Metheny. Uh, tell us how this came to be. Uh, well, Pat and I have known each other for, I want to say, about almost 15 years now. And I first, I was a, I mean, and still am a huge fan of his music. And, and because he's done so many different things musically, we got to know each other around 2005, 2006, because we were playing on a, a series in Richmond, Virginia um, at different times. I was there with Shanghai String Quartet. So after that concert, the presenter was talking about how she was going to be bringing in Pat Metheny Trio. So I was like, oh, you know, and I was telling her that we had just we had just done this record. You know, it was in the can. It hadn't been released yet. Um, Images of Metheny. So that that's eventually what we called it. But it was a, at that time, I think it was something like, well, I thought I, I might have an opportunity to get his blessing on it because I, I was so, I knew so much about his music and and that and and that kind of thing that I also knew, or I also had heard sort of through the grapevine, if you will, that he wasn't all that much of a fan of tribute records or that he wasn't real keen on a lot of how they uh, how they turned out. So I thought, well, if he doesn't like it, then. I can ask the label if they can bag it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, so I got to, so I thought, well, then I'll meet him and I can kind of, maybe that'll be the entree into, you know, like the, the entry point into that conversation, which it was. And, and he loved the CDs I gave to him and stuff. It was after his concert there. And at that point we kind of, I did send the master to him and, uh, and I guess he and Lyle Mays and Steve Rodby all really dug it. So, I was like, great. He and Steve Robbie even wrote a kind of a forward or a paragraph or something for it, which, had, you know, for me, it was like a really great thing to have. And, and from actually that point, we, we, we kind of became these occasional email pen pals. And, and I would tell him when I was in New York and pretty much every time I was in the tri-state area, he would come to the concert. He would like kind of either he sometimes you'd have to sneak in so he wouldn't be seen. <laughs> but um, yeah, it was like, it was it was cool and then of course he would tell me and that when he was coming to the the cleveland area and stuff and so yeah it just it became this kind of friendship about 10 years ago he said he said you know i'm gonna i'd like to write you a, a solo guitar piece he said i don't know when or if it's going to happen he said it might just show up in the mail it was like 10 years ago wow so when he wrote when the Los Angeles Guitar Quartet, which is the title of the record, is the piece that he wrote for them, Road to the Sun. Right. And then one day he's like, you know, I got it. That's where your piece is going to go. I think this is a record. He said, and that was like two or three years ago, three, maybe three years ago. We wow. recorded this like January 2019 was when we actually did the recording. Well, so. that is that is so cool. And I, I thought of you, I mean, you, you seem to be like-minded artists that in that you both like all different kinds of music and yeah. you grew up um in buffalo yep so you um, buffalo new york and i studied with um one of the founding members of the buffalo guitar quartet jeremy sparks and then you studied classical music at the cleveland institute as well but i but with jeremy my first teacher i had gone i had gotten pretty far down the classical guitar road i mean, when i auditioned for cleveland institute of music for john holmquist I mean, I was, I mean, I had already played probably five, four or five hours of different music by that point, including concertos and a little bit of chamber music and that kind of thing. So for me personally, like I was all in on the whole classical music thing. Um, and that was really because my first teacher just that that's what he did. That's what he knew. And, and he, and that's how he played guitar. He was a classical guitarist and the, he was in this group of, uh, these four long haired guys with, that would wear tuxes and play WC and Darius Mio and, and they were like real, really great musicians and great players. Right. And at the same time, you, you told me in the past about listening to your parents' record collection, your dad. Yeah, that was most, yeah, that was all, see, that's the thing. I, 
I think what I did on the guitar every day, I didn't really think of as anything other than that was just, it was more like as a kid, that's like, I also did soccer. So, you know, I also love soccer. I love sports, love throwing the football around, played hockey outside, of course, like in the snow, in the you know, <laughs> street, street hockey and that kind of thing. And then this guitar thing was kind of my thing that was separate from my brother and sister or any of my friends, right? But then my basically my parents record collection was entirely modern jazz right and that's where i think maybe when i heard first heard pat my record my mother's record record collection was entirely dance more like beat oriented music like or dance oriented music so like Stax singles motown singles the beatles love and spoonful mamas and the papas i didn't have like classical music records so my classical music listening and education was kind of through the guitar and then I got to know classical music through that, you know, other, you know, things that didn't involve the guitar. Yeah. So, so with this album and with this piece, Four Paths of Light, did it just show up in your um, inbox one day? or Yeah, did you I, yeah actually, it, was, it did sort of just show up in my mail one day. I mean, Pat is so busy. When I think of how busy I am and kind of lament sometimes how, how crazy my work schedule is every day, and then I think of him, I can't even really like process what it must like a typical day must be like for him. So he would go, he would not be in contact for a long time, like four or six months. And then it would, it would just be like, all right, here it is. And it was like the whole thing, the whole piece, the whole 19 minute piece was all in this kind of um, real book font, which I thought was really... <laughs> I recognize the font because I used to play uh, jazz, very mediocre uh, jazz, you know, as a, as a side man in coffee houses and restaurants and this kind of thing to help pay the rent. And, and, I, and I always just really admired any jazz mus musicians that could really play and had a real, you know, big brain and Pat's obviously one of those guys. So I recognized the font that it was written in, and uh, and that's how it arrived. It was it was it was like that. That was like September two thousand eighteen, and then he booked the dates for January two thousand nineteen. So I didn't have a whole lot of time. We met in Saratoga Springs at Skidmore College. I was doing a residency there. So he's like, "I see you're playing in Skidmore. Well, let's let's meet up and go over the piece." I was like, "Uh, yeah, sure." Uh, you know, I'm like writing back, uh, "Okay," and then it's like. You know, I had a, so I thought, okay, well, I, I got to work, maybe learn a couple pages of each of the movements uh, here so that he can, you know, so we can have a session on if, if I'm, if I'm in the ballpark with, you know, the interpretation. And that helped a lot, actually, before just that little meeting for two or three hours helped before the, the sessions in January. Well, it's interesting because he's talked about how this was kind of a departure for him because he was used to writing music that anticipated improvisation and this was composed through and how did you approach it did what what are four paths of light how did you how did you get into his um, oh they well yeah i mean actually I, I approached it as i would any you know world premiere that that i would do i could discern which stems were down and up and which was a middle voice and that kind of thing because i know his music so well from you know the dozen literally dozens of records that I bought as we talked beforehand you know it wasn't a thing where I was asking him to write something but he did ask he said is there anything in particular like you might like to hear and I and I cited a lot of his more dissonant ventures if you will into music Ornette Coleman John Zorn the, the, these kind of things they did or even just even some certain Pat Metheny group tracks you know, those are some of my favorite things of his, you know, fa favorite tracks or and that first movement arrived kind of like that. Like it was pretty, it was like a buzzsaw. And I thought, that's great. It's really edgy and like and and uh, but also sounding very much like him. And then the second was like a tune, like a ballad type of tune. So it was really clear right away. Like I could I could dig into the piece right away. But then the rest of the detail stuff, we kind of learned through the sessions. It was three days like it was something like 26 7 8 hours of recording time he had booked and we used every he used every minute of it i would be playing like one phrase but he would have me do it like four three or four different ways 
So mm -hmm. I gave him all these in the session, well, like a lot of different options. So I began to lose track of how the piece actually sounded to me. In a way, I was trying to think of it like a, as a sideman for Miles or a side, if I was a sideman for Joe Zalinal or something like that, like, like, like something that's more like the concept is there and, and uh, they have a very clear vision of what it is. And then I'm supposed to just execute that, you know, type of thing. I was very much in that mode, like I would be with any, any composer really for right. a world. Although world. this time the composer is sitting right there. <laughs> yeah. He's under, he's behind the glass. Right. Which was, right. which was easier in a way because it was more immediate. He would just say, okay, now, okay, you, this is a nice thing. You did like an arc phrase with that thing. Now, now start the phrase flat and then decrescendo down to nothing or whatever. He just, he'd kind of do these different things with it. And then I'd just play it back that way. And uh, then we get a couple good takes of that one, that version of the phrase and this kind of thing. So he had all these kind of things that he could just patch together. When, when you're talking about going through the music with, with him and yeah. making suggestions, are you talking in strictly musical terms or are there extra strictly musical? No, there was no, if you, no, I mean, the, the movements are one, two, three, and four. There's no narrative. There's no, um, there's no literary narrative or anything like that to it, which I think is great. <laughs> I mean, that's, I mean, I think, I mean, that's, I mean, I mean, it's always nice that I, I, I know it's nice for some people to have something to attach it to, but again, wh why he's kind of, why he's one of my favorite artists is that I think a lot of his best music doesn't have that and you have to kind of deal with it you know, it's, it's sort of like the best of weather report, like, you know, Joe Zawinul and, and Wayne Shorter and that kind of thing. When the music is at its most intriguing, it allows you to sort of paint the picture, if you will. And I'm not a visual guy, but it sort of allows you to sort of fill in your own kind of narrative to what the music is. It's got a mystery to it or right. a, kind of a mystique to it. So just to give a quick example, like I would play this thing and I could figure it was aggressive. You know, I figured the first movement, you know. So, and then he would say, okay, okay, good. All right. And then we, he, <laughs> I, I wouldn't even get really through a page of it. And so, okay. So, so then I would play like that. He would say, okay, now I really want those, those open, open G notes to really like, really stab. Like, so like every one of them, I want you to accent them. So I do, you know, other takes that were like, like, I was like ripping the, the string off the guitar. Like, of playing like I'm really smacking the strings and and then and then he had me kind of do these really uh, like these kind of exaggerated shapes so he'd have something like that to work with and and all the time on that first movement he was saying like I, I just want you to get like like really angry like I want you to go like Pantera I mean which I was like wow he, he just referenced Pantera <laughs> so you know, he just, I guess, trying to get, you know, you know, get me into a certain space with it. And, you know, it was kind of like that kind of thing. Very, I mean, actually not unlike any classical composer I would, I would have worked with on something, you know, they want, they know what they want. Um, it's just that he wanted different options. Cause I think they, it, he's, he's more accustomed, I think, to putting things together, using the studio as actually the instrument where this, where the, you, you have all these options and he can put it together. So. so there's no, as you said, there's no narrative, but is, I mean, every piece of music tells some sort of story, but it, the listener can, I guess, take what each listener hears in it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's, I mean, that's exactly, I think. And I think that all three of those movements are so different from each other, but they're all connected you know, the, all musically, there are, there are uh, chords and there are melodies and these kind of things that, that reoccur in all three movements, but they're in, 
completely different uh, emotional guises, I guess you could say, uh, depending on the movement that they're in. And so the way the piece actually holds together, it's, it's very, very much meant, it's not like a suite. And like, I think I've heard people describe it as a suite. It's, it's very much more, it's much more like a sonata in the sense that all four of those move, all four of the movements really are, uh, it has to be listened. It's, it's best listened to from start to finish. It really works best as that, you know, is that kind of thing. So, cause, because they're thematically, uh, linked all the way through. Uh, is there a way to put into words what Pat Metheny's voice? I still can't do it. I, I just, I can't, it's so hard for me to describe what he is. I mean, that's, it's just a feeling for me. I, I don't know what it is. It's just, I've never been able to really, I've never been able to describe to people like, you know, when I was in my twenties, it would be like, something. it would be something like, like if you describe Mahavishnu Orchestra, like you could describe it in a way. Like it's like, oh yeah, John McLaughlin. Like it's like fire, <laughs> like, you know, it's like jazz, but like on fire and on steroids. And he's like playing these blistering things. And then Jan Harmer, his keyboard sounds like a guitar. And then Billy Cobham's like all over the kit. And then it's just, it's like, it's just like full on and blah, blah, blah. You like you've described, you can do like, I can't really, it's so hard to describe Pat's music. I, it's, it just comes from so many different places. And I think actually, as a, because I was such a big jazz fan, the more I explored his music, the more of those kind of things I found, but you can't, his influences are not that easy to identify. Like, you have to really understand the history of jazz to get, in a way, kind of like get what his thing is. And that's why it's really hard to explain. Thanks so much, Jason. Four Paths of Light on Pat Metheny's Road to the Sun. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's great to talk with you about it.